Well, we journalists love a good cliché, even if it's more than 40 years old. So we've dusted off the summer of discontent as union leaders do battle with employers over pay and jobs. We've had a week in which the rail network virtually ground to a halt. On Tuesday, ballot papers go out to more than 115,000 postal workers over its pay dispute with Royal Mail. Joining me now is Dave Ward, the leader of the General uh, of the Communication Workers Union. Morning, Dave. Morning, um, What exactly are you asking the Royal Mail and BT bosses for? Well, it's about getting a, a pay rise that recognises the impact of the cost of living crisis. Uh, it's also about recognising the efforts that work as all of our members. Uh, there's, we've got disputes going on right across the whole of the union at the moment. Um, that, you know, recognises the efforts that have kept these companies going. I mean, the background to this, as well as the cost of living crisis, is the reality that BT posted profits of 1.3 billion last year, Royal Mail 758 million. They paid shareholder dividends of 700 million and 400 million, respectively. And I think what's making workers more and more angry is that the CEO of BT, his pay has actually gone up by 32% uh, in the last year. In Royal Mail, the financial director uh, apparently hit all their targets and got 1.5 million, and the CEO's just received a bonus of uh, £140,000. I, I, I so, want to come... you know, people are saying, I think, enough's enough. I you want to come to all of that in, in a moment, but yeah. let's, let's talk about what it will mean for people who would be watching this programme. Uh, last week, they couldn't get to work because of the trains. Um, they, it looks like they won't be able to fly on their summer holidays. So now, actually, if somebody sends them a parcel, they won't be able to get that either. It's pretty miserable, isn't it? Well, I think our job is to represent workers. Um, uh, and what I say to that, to anybody listening to this, is that, you know, we have a simple message, which is, you know, every worker counts or no worker counts. Uh, and, of course, you know, going on strike is the last resort. You know, we do that when negotiations have failed. And we will be, you know, once we've done our ballots, we've got our BT ballots that we announced the results of on Thursday, as you said, postal workers, over 115,000, will be receiving their ballot papers on Tuesday. Um, you know, we'll be making it public that we want negotiations to resolve those disputes. So the objective is never a strike. Um, but this is, this is a moment, I think, uh, and I hear the, the message that you said about the summer of discontent. I mean, obviously, the people who are trying to create that image uh, is, the, is the government at the moment. And, you know, I think people across the UK uh, have sort of seen through some of these tactics. So what I would say to you is this, is if people look at the financial crisis, 2008, the pandemic... Uh, the cost of living crisis, the climate crisis. The only certainty in the UK at the moment, if we don't make a stand for all working people, is, is that the rich are going to get richer and the powerful are getting more powerful. And that's what we've got to address in the UK, including in how the economy operates. Just... Well, let's come to that in a second, but uh, am I to understand that you really now expect that BT workers, when balloted, will probably reject any offer that's on the table and that we're heading for industrial action with BT? Well, we didn't get a chance to reject... Their, well, the union rejected their offer. Our members uh, in BT, across BT Group, never got a chance because the same guy who increased his earnings by 32%, Philip Jansen, the CEO, imposed a pay deal of £1,500 on the workforce. In Royal Mail, they've imposed a pay deal of 2%. The, these things are unacceptable. So, so stale mail's off and email's going to be off or, uh, you know, it, whatever the BT Communications uh, represents. Um, the, the CEO of Royal Mail admits that his workers deserve a pay, right? pay rise. He's put 2% uh, on the table, 5.5% uh, on the table as well. Uh, is it reasonable to launch industrial action uh, against somebody who actually sympathises publicly with your members? Well, it's reasonable to make a stand for working people and our members will be the judge of the actions of the CEO. Um, I have a different view of the way that they are behaving at the moment. Um, I think if you look at... You know, it's the same tactics. It's about trying to divide workers. 
The, the issues for us at the moment in the UK, and, you know, I repeat this, this is for all workers in the UK, is that this can't carry on. You cannot continue to talk about levelling up, to talk about modernisation, when all of the proposals that these companies come forward with are actually levelling down uh, work, the lives and the living standards of working people. It's Look, not acceptable. Uh, you're in a slightly different position to some of the others, uh, uh, disputes, teachers and so on, because your, your, your people work for a private company. Isn't the problem here that uh, you want these uh, pay demands to be met, but the Royal Mail CEO says he needs to remain competitive in a tight market? And isn't it the case that if you win your demands, people who are going to be happiest won't be your members? but the bosses at DPD, UPS, DHL, FedEx, TNT and all the competitors because Royal Mail's prices are going to go up, they are going to soak up the business and your members will lose jobs. Look, let, let me be absolutely clear. This is not a debate about affordability. Uh, both BT and Royal Mail Group uh, could afford to pay workers more money. They say not. Um, well, they can. This is simply not true. Uh, I've just given you the numbers. They choose deliberately to put other arguments on the table. Now, this argument about competition uh, and effectively that we should just accept the race to the bottom, um, I think that's a point... We've reached a point now where we have to challenge that argument. And that's why the TUC, which hasn't been picked up by the media, is also running a campaign at the moment, which all unions have signed up to, and our union led this campaign, for a new deal for working people uh, and a new social settlement in the UK. And I think you're going to see that support for that grow during well, the course of the summer. Well, it, it looks as though, actually, there's a lot of this going on across the, the union movement. Um, your colleague, uh, Mr McLynch, who's become a sort of television and uh, social media star, and indeed you, have had some things to say, I think, about uh, the Labour Party's support or lack thereof for uh, your dispute. Mr Starmer, Sir Keir, uh, ordered his front benches to stay away from the RMT's picket lines. Some chose to ignore it. But, uh, and I talked to Mr Lammy this morning, he wouldn't commit himself on any of the disputes, either the RMT or indeed what, yours. Um, how do you feel about the level of support you're getting from the Labour Party? Well, first of all, uh, my answer to that is it's time for unions to step up now community organisations and run our own campaigns and not rely on any political party to solve our problems. Uh, and I think that's going to increasingly be the, the reality of the situation. When it comes to, you know, the government, I mean, they're picking a fight. Um, they've chosen a side. They're coming out because, like they do on everything, to try and divide working people. I don't think that's going to work. I think they've miscalculated. I think Labour have miscalculated because... I think they're obsessed with, you know, reconnecting with working people. And, you know, the reason that people moved away from Labour was over Brexit. I don't think people are going to turn their backs on working people who are facing these challenges, because we're all genuinely in that together. And I think Labour have miscalculated. Um, it's up to Keir Starmer what he does. But what we're going to do is reach out to working people across the UK uh, in communities coming together to really bring um, about serious change. You're, you're, you're pretty hacked off with Labour Party, aren't you? I, I'm disappointed, um, but I don't let it get us down. You know, I, I don't rely on... I've been around too long, Trevor, to rely on politicians to solve problems for you. This is a moment where trade unions, community organisations, we all need to step up and we need to shift the balance of forces in the world of work in how the economy operates and across society. Dave Ward, thank you very much indeed for your time this Thank morning. you.